the world is a majestic place from one end. The core reason of the festival is to bring people together. While many people rejoice, there are some people who are suffering, like the people in Gaza, Palestine and Israel. They are at war since 2014 and the issue has been escalated and the people are suffering the consequences. Militants in Gaza fired rockets into Israel on Monday night and Israel responded by hitting the targets in the territory. On Wednesday, Israel said that it had killed senior officer of the Hamas group in Gaza and targeted missile launching sites. Yenam is experiencing the largest humanitarian crisis in history. 12 million children are in need of food, water, shelter and medicine. Children are fighting an epidemic, a pandemic, famine and a war at the same time. About 80% of the people need help. More than all the states in India, Kashmir has been suffering the most. Due to the riots and Indo-Pakistan war, the internet had to be cut off and, were, and a total lockdown was imposed. Just a couple of days after the lockdown was lifted, India-wide lockdown had to be imposed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Since 2019, Chinese government had pursued the policy that had led to more than 1 million Muslims being held in secretive detention camps without any legal process. In what has become the large-scale detention of ethnic and religious minorities since the Holocaust. Unlike other countries, Syria is at war with itself. There has been a civil war in Syria for last eight years, with different groups trying to seize control of the country. The fighting has been between soldiers who supported Syrian President Bashar al-Assad and fighters who were known as rebels who don't want Assad to be in power anymore. US and Afghanistan are at war for last two decades. They have been a loss on both the sides. Due to the latest bombing, the situation has been escalated. After consulting closely with our allies and partners, with our military leaders and intelligence personnel, with our diplomats and our development experts, with the Congress and the Vice President, as well as with Mr. Ghani and many others around the world, I concluded that it's time to end America's longest war. It's time for American troops to come home. When I came to office, I inherited a diplomatic agreement duly negotiated between the government of the United States and the Taliban that all U.S. forces would be out of Afghanistan by May 1, 2021. Just three months after my inauguration, that's what we inherited, that commitment. It's perhaps not what I would have negotiated myself, but it was an agreement made by the United States government, and that means something. So in keeping with that agreement and with our national interest, the United States will begin our final withdrawal, begin it on May 1 of this year. We'll not conduct a hasty rush to the exit. We'll do it, we'll do it responsibly, deliberately and safely. And we will do it in full coordination with our allies and partners who now have more forces in Afghanistan than we do. And the Taliban should know that if they attack us as we draw down, we will defend ourselves and our partners with all the tools at our disposal. On 4th August 2020, a large amount of ammonium nitrate stored at the port of the city Beirut, the capital of Lebanon, exploded, causing at least 207 deaths and 7,500 injuries and $15 billion in property damage leaving estimated 300,000 people homeless. According to UN, about 2.6 million Somalias living in protest internal displacement, facing severe abuse including discriminate killings, forced evictions, sexual violence and limited access to essential services. Due to the spike in COVID-19 cases, many people have lost their loved ones. India had to be on a constant lockdown leading economic loss 
and driving more people below the poverty line. The Libyan crisis refers to the current humanitarian crisis and political military instability occurring in Libya, beginning with the Arab Spring protest of 2011, which led to the civil war. Foreign military interventions and the outcasting and death of Muammar Gaddafi. Mali suffered the drought from 2016 to 2018 that affected their growing seasons, leading to increased violent crimes such as kidnapping and armed robbery. While some of the world is enjoying Eid, some of the world is suffering. I think it's time to rise and help them. As all problems are not created equal, so to the solution. We cannot solve a country's political issue, but we can take care of the hunger. Share a part with other families so that they can celebrate Eid. Because what is more fun than watching a smile on a hungry kid's face? Share this message so that more people help each other and share the love on this E with the person who needs the most. I'm Harish Angarala offering my love in the form of message. Signing off and see you in the next one.